Hey everybody, welcome to JLB Sports TV. I am Justin Block, and today Liverpool have signed Real Madrid midfielder Nuri Sahin on loan. Now this caps off over a month of a tug of war between Liverpool and Arsenal for the loan signature of this player, and even as late as last week it appeared that he would be an Arsenal player. But earlier this week it appeared that the deal had fallen through because Arsene Wenger didn't want to uh, commit to the deal because they didn't have a buyout clause at the end. After that Liverpool swooped in, sealed the deal, and Nuri Sain is officially a Liverpool player. Now before I get on to how this will affect Liverpool, I just want to ask Arsenal, why? Now, I understand why they didn't want to sign Neri Sahin without a buyout clause. He'd only be there for a season, and Wenger didn't want to incorporate a player into a squad who wouldn't be there for more than a year. Just to drop Sahin in there and then pull him out at the end of the season and have to go out and find a replacement would be troublesome for him and something he didn't want to have to deal with. Also, the fact that it's apparently costing Liverpool a £5 million buyout clause plus 70% of his wages, which are about £84,000 a week, um, that didn't appeal to Arsenal at all. They didn't want to give Nuri Sahin and have to commit a about a £10 million total package to a player who'd only be there for one season, and it'd just basically be a rental for them. But I think even with the you know, almost £10 million reported uh, package that's costing Liverpool, Arsenal still have to make this deal. This is a team that has lost Robin Van Persie, has lost Song. Um, I don't know what the status of Wilshire is. These, this team has lost its two best players this season, and they have a chance to bring in a quality player. Uh, a player in Nuri Sahin, who was Borussia Dortmund's uh, captain, um, their leading chance creator, the Bundesliga player of the seasons a couple of years ago. Nuri Sahin, the heir to Chabi Alonso in the Real Madrid midfield. This is an outstanding player who has an incredible passing range, and a player that can really help any team regardless of his price. And uh, Arsenal just simply passed up on him because they didn't want to, you know, apparently pay... Um, a couple million pounds more uh, a year than Liverpool were offering, or a couple thousand pounds more uh, per week in wages. For me, I think that's just stinginess on Wenger's part. Wenger has been such a wage Nazi these past couple seasons and really has refused to spend out of what he's comfortable with, which is perfectly fine. But I think at this point in the Premier League, we are in an arms race. There are the Manchester United's, uh, the Cities, and Chelsea's of the world. That's the top three. And then the bottom three, we have. Liverpool, Tottenham, and Arsenal are really just fighting to get into the Champions League qualification. And the team that sort of bri uh, bridges the gap between the two, or sort of meets at a middle ground between uh, Tottenham, Arsenal, and Liverpool, and um, Chelsea, City, and United, that's the team that's going to get fourth place. And whoever will spend the most and acquire the most players to get to that point, um, you know, that's who we're going to see in the Champions League, and then the other two teams are just going to miss out on Champions League money. Um, and all the greatest, th all the great things that come with Champions League transfers, players, you know, the whole nine yards. So when you're in an arms race right now, where you really can't compete financially with the top three teams, and you want to acquire as many great players as possible just for the season, just to make that fourth place run, um, I think you do it if you're Arsenal. This is a team that's been sitting on, I don't know, hundreds of million pounds in you know transfer fees and player profits over the past decade, and they couldn't afford you know a drop in the bucket for Neri Sahin to try to get Champions League qualification to try to live on to fight another season. At the end. I don't really doubt Wenger that much. Arsenal the past four years have actually been sixth in total uh, transfer expenditure if you look at this graph right here. And because of that, they sort of almost project to be finished anywhere between fourth and tenth place in the Premier League these past couple seasons, but they consistently outperform what they spend um, because, I don't know, Wenger is just, he knows something else. He's frankly a football genius. Now for Liverpool, um, they're getting a hell of a player, somebody who can immediately come in and he's automatically the second best passer next to Jarrett on the team and a guy who's an 82 in FIFA. But now Liverpool have a bit of a conundrum in midfield. Traditionally, right now in Brendan Rodgers' side, they're only playing three midfielders and you're paying all this money to Sahin. Um, he came here because he needs first team football. He's going to get first team football. So who gets the ax and what formation can we see with Neri Sahin to incorporate all the midfielders that Liverpool currently have? So Right now, if you look at this lineup, we currently have you know Rain on goal, the standard back four, and I'm just gonna project it like we have a normal 4-3-3 that we've seen with Brendan Rodgers thus far. Except I see uh, Neri Sahin stepping into Joe Allen's role, sort of the um, the deep line. I don't I don't want to say playmaker in midfield, but the guy that will control the tempo, um, create opportunities from a deep line position, and really just handle the game with Lucas. So across we'd have Lucas, Gerard, and Sahin, and up front we would have whatever attacking three would please you. But with that lineup, you do eliminate Joe Allen. I think Joe Allen is very important to the side. Brendan Rodgers didn't bring him in for nothing. Um, and I think he plans on playing Sahin and Joe Allen at the same time. So what do we have now? Well, sticking with that 4-3-3, I think that we could see Gerard possibly in a false nine role. So the midfield three would be Lucas, Allen, and Sahin, and then Gerard playing as that false nine right up front with Suarez perhaps to the right and Barini out to the left. Now this would totally devoid the team of a natural winger, and I'm not sure if Steven Gerrard can be a proper false nine. I think that he has the finishing ability and he has the creative ability, but I'm not sure if he has the pace 
And if he has really the hold up striker skills that you would need um, out of a false nine. Yes, it's called a false nine, but you still need to be able to have a player who will hold up the ball and sort of masquerade as a striker. We saw Fabregas play as a false nine for Spain in the European Championships a little bit to a little mixed effect. I wasn't too big of a fan of that. But if Brendan Rodgers believes that Steven Gerrard has the skills necessary to be a false nine, um, I'm not going to doubt him until I see it uh, happen. Now this 4-3-1-2 that I'm about to present, I think brings out uh, the best on all these players and has them in their most natural positions. So in the midfield three, you would have Lucas Allen and Sahin. Then at attacking center mid, you would have Gerard, and then you would have Suarez and Barini up front. Now, I think if you're playing a game of FIFA or if you're anybody but Brendan Rodgers, this is the lineup that you would play to get all these players in. Of course, again, you don't really have a traditional wide man, but I think you can compensate because you have such a great midfield and Suarez likes to get out wide anyway. The only problem with this is I don't really see Brendan Rodgers playing this. I think Brendan Rodgers wants to stick to his 4-3-3 and I don't think he wants to deviate that. He wants to build that 4-3-3 in now and have that in effect for the next couple years. Um, not necessarily just to, you know, um, appease Sahin or appease the pieces he has right now. Now, while this creates a little bit of a headache for fans and Brendan Rodgers, I think it's the best kind of headache you can have. Um, in my mind, you can never have too many quality midfielders with injuries and depth and the four competitions that Liverpool have to compete in this year. Every midfielder that Liverpool has will get their chance to play at some point. So out of all the possibilities I gave you, uh, tell me which one you guys think is, is the best. Do you think Brendan Rodgers should and will stick with the 4-3-3 or will he divert to the 4-3-1-2 like I suggested? So give me your thoughts down below. If you have any other uh, different lineups you think that Sahin could fit in with Liverpool, uh, please tell me. Also, please just tell me your overall, overall thoughts on the transfer. Do you think this is good, bad? Um, any thoughts you may have, hit the comments down below. I'm very excited to have Nuri Sahin and I think he'll be a great signing for Liverpool. Um, even if it's just for a season, he can really help Liverpool get back to the top four or at least crack the top five. Again, quality is quality is quality and we're in an arms race right now and I think any bit of help that Liverpool can get for this season um, will be great. So that's all for today guys, YNWA. Right. But I think anytime you can shut down the opposing team's best player or at least sort of um, dull off his ineffectiveness or you know, put a damper in his rampage, uh, you have a good chance of getting